Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I wanted to talk to you about my favourite flower books and I've got a good pile of them over here that we're going to go through this morning and have a look at how they've helped me with my flower growing over the last few years. So I've always loved books. Um, I have grown up where I was a kid under the duvet after lights out time, reading with a torch because I was really into the latest novel. Um, I've gone away to work and go to university where I would still enjoy a good book. And now even in the winter months um, when it's darker in the evenings, I'd rather go to bed with a good book to read than stay up and watch the telly. And I always have loved to learn as well. So before I was growing flowers, I would have hobbies such as baking and cake decorating that I taught myself. I taught myself to make curtains and to do all these things, I have always gone and bought myself a nice book and taught myself how to do it. And the same happened with flower growing as well. So growing up, I had always been lucky that I'd grown up in larger gardens. Mum and dad um, had loved to potter in the garden, mum growing roses, dad building flower beds. And um, I'd always had a little bit of experience from that, but really just at a very basic level. I'd been given a little patch to garden on and I would be interested in that for a while. And then when I left home, I had flats and things and, and no gardens with them till eventually I got my first little patch of garden with our first house but again it was just growing in some pots we had a little area of lawn but I was at work most of the time and it was just a bit of a hobby on weekends it wasn't until we had the kids and we moved into a family home and had a little bit more garden that I started to take an interest in it and I really enjoyed growing fruit and vegetables with the girls when they were little and planting some shrubs and trees and roses and watching them grow but it wasn't until we came here to Ravenscraig our final family home with its acre of land that I really had to teach myself how to garden and then I found my interest in growing cut flowers and it all snowballed and grew from there but I had no horticultural knowledge and um, to grow my business I had to teach myself and the way that I started off doing it was a little bit through trial and error but a huge amount through reading books and I have found some great books that have helped me along the way. So although these books have really helped me to establish a flower growing business and to sell my cut flowers, these books are also great if you are just wanting to grow cut flowers to enjoy at home. So you might have a smaller area of garden that you want to devote to growing cut flowers so you can enjoy them in a vase in the house. And the brilliant thing about cut flowers is it really doesn't matter what size of garden you have to grow them. You can grow them in pots on a balcony, you can grow them in a raised bed, you can grow them in a part of your allotment or just give over one of your flower beds in your garden to growing a few cut flowers. You don't need acres and acres of land to be able to do it. You can grow a really nice selection of cut flowers in a small space and these books although they are some of them aim more at flower farming than others some of them today that I'm going to show you are just great for anybody at home that wants to grow cut flowers too. So we're going to have a good look at all the different ones, my favourites, and um, I have to say I'm still buying books, I'm still a gardening and flower growing is one of those things that you are never going to stop learning with. So um, every time I see a new book out that I think looks really good, um, I quite often go and pick it up. One of the things I really like to do when I get the time, I think I'm not sure when it will be, but I'd love to be able to go and write a book myself about my own experiences of flower growing. But let's today go and have a look at some of these books. I'm going to leave a link in the description um, to an ideas list of Amazon that I have, and these will have all the books in that. So if you're interested in them, you can go and click on the link there. So all my flower farming books do different things for me. Some of them were great at the beginning when I was just starting out um, and I might not refer to them quite as much now. Um, others are ones that I dip into and out of all the time now. So I might have had the book for nine years, but it's still a really good reference for me and I'll go back to it. Um, other ones have been ones that I found more recently have really helped me as I have gone on and adapted my flower growing business and there's new things that I've wanted to learn about. Um, so the very first book that I ever bought was The Flower Farmer by Lynn Bozinski. 
and this was a fantastic book when I was starting out because it just gave me a really good overview of growing flowers as a business and it had all sorts in it. It had stories from flower farmers already had established businesses in it, which I really liked. It also talked about everything you can think of. It talked about soil, it talked about harvesting flowers, conditioning flowers, everything that you wanted covered um, for if you were starting a flower growing business. So that one was a really good one for starting off um, in the world of flower growing. So when I started out growing flowers, another book that I found really useful was Sarah Raven's The Cutting Garden. And this is a book that she wrote, I think in 1996 it came out. And it's been really useful, especially in those early days when I didn't know a huge amount about cut flowers and I was learning about the different varieties. And what I really liked about Sarah Raven's book was the section at the back. So she had split it down into seasons, which I liked, and the flowers that you could get then, and also different colours. So she'd split it into white sections and blues and purples, and that I thought was really nice. And also what was really helpful in the book was that when I looked up a particular flower in a season, then I could see what the conditioning for that flower was. So it's one of the things that's um, really important is if you're going to grow cut flowers and you want to cut them for a vase or to sell, you don't want them wilting once you have cut them. And so conditioning is really important. And I had to learn how to condition all the different varieties of flowers because they're all slightly different and also foliage is slightly different as well. So this was a really good starting point for me to learn about that. And conditioning is something that I hope I'll do a video about next year when the flowers come back because um, there's all sorts of handy tips to know about keeping flowers going in your vase. But that, that was a great book by Sarah Raven in those early days when I was just starting out with my flower growing. So I started flower growing in 2014, 2015 properly as a business. And when I had first started it out, um, I was growing my business quite slowly. It was just really jars of flowers on my garden gates all for passers-by to come and buy if they would like to. But it quickly started to grow. And um, as we went into 2016, it was really starting to take off and I was needing to know a lot more about growing flowers. And in 2014, when I just started out, I'd made a lot of mistakes and I'd lost a lot of flowers um, just due to trial and error and not understanding things like um, growing conditions and the pests and diseases in the garden and slugs, rabbits, all sorts of things that um, I just needed to learn about as I was going along um, and try and prevent um, the same things happening in future seasons. So I was on a very steep learning curve and I'd read those initial few books, but the book that really, really helped me and I just devoured it, I think I just sat down and read the whole thing nonstop when I first got it, was The Flower Farmer's Year. And George Newbury brought this book out in 2014, which was exactly the right time for me. It was just when I was at that starting point um, in my career as a flower grower, and I just needed something that was really easy to read and explain to me exactly what I needed to be doing and help me prevent some of the mistakes that I had been making. And Georgie's book did that. It was absolutely fantastic. And it was just so user friendly as well. Um, it wasn't complicated. It was easy to read. She explained everything in a really simple, easy manner. Um, and I think that really, really helped me in my fl future flower growing years around that kind of 2016, 2017 time. So in 2016, I had my first wedding that I did the flowers for, and this wasn't ever something that was part of what I imagined with business. It's something that I fell into and I absolutely loved it. It was one of the biggest challenges I think I've ever taken on, teaching myself from scratch how to grow somebody's wedding flowers and then how to arrange them. And I had absolutely no experience of this whatsoever. Um, my first wedding came about from um, putting a flyer through local neighbours' doors um, to advertise my garden gate stall with the jam jar posies. And then I got approached to see if I would then do flowers for a person's wedding. And at the time, I had no idea whether I could do this or not. I'd never made a buttonhole, never made a bouquet. I was only making jam jar posies. But I had enough time to plan it and to learn, um, and I decided to go for it. And from there, that led to a lot of other weddings, and that's what I've been doing for the last several years. But 
I had no knowledge of wedding flowers and Georgie Newbury came to the rescue again because in 2016 she published just at the right time a book called Grow Your Own Wedding Flowers. And um, this book was perfect for me. And just like her Flower Farmer's yearbook, Georgie Newbury's book is just really easy to read. It's really easy to go through the different chapters and take on the information that she's given out. It's not said in a complicated way. One of the most tricky bits is that if you're growing wedding flowers, you have to really plan ahead and think, what am I gonna grow that I know is going to be blooming in that particular week on that particular month of say the following year. And um, Georgie's book's fantastic. Fantastic. It goes through spring weddings, summer weddings, autumn weddings, winter weddings, giving you lots and lots of ideas about what you can grow and how to go about it. And Georgie's book is based not really at necessarily at flower farmers growing for weddings, but actually it's if you want to grow your own wedding flowers or maybe your daughter or son's getting married and you've decided that you really love gardening and you love growing flowers and you want to have a shot at growing wedding flowers for them. So if that's the case, this is a fantastic book to go to to um, and a really good reference guide. The only thing I would say is if you are planning on growing wedding flowers for a family member or for yourself, definitely give yourself enough time. You're gonna have to definitely be planning this at least a year in advance so that you can grow things at the right time of year. So read up on some good resources to find out what to do and um, then a year in advance at least is quite helpful because then you will get things in at the right time. So you can plant bulbs at the right time. If it's a spring wedding, you can get your seed sowing off to a good start if it's a um, time that you need to be doing that for the following year. Um, so give yourself plenty of time. And um, if I can grow wedding flowers and learn how to do it, then you can as well. And it's definitely something that I have absolutely loved. Um, and I'm gonna miss it, um, but now we're gonna change the business into a slightly different direction, which is gonna work for me and my family a bit better. Um, but doing wedding flowers definitely was one of the biggest challenges that I've ever had. And um, one of my proudest things as well, to have taught myself how to do that and um, to have met so many lovely couples and worked with them. So let's have a look at some other books. That's Georgie's ones, which were fantastic. While we're talking about wedding flowers, another book that I really like to dip in and out of is Vintage Wedding Flowers by Vic Brotherson. And it's a lovely book to have a look at just for inspiration of what cut flowers go well with other cut flowers and foliage for making up wedding bouquets and buttonholes and flower crowns. There's nothing better than seeing wedding flowers that have been put together from locally grown sources. So nothing that's been imported, things that have been grown just where that couple is having their wedding or where they come from, maybe even some from their own gardens. And the combinations that you can put together that you might just not ordinarily think of, you might think, oh, you can't use that in a wedding bouquet or that won't hold up or that won't go well with that. But so many things um, can just go together really nicely. And this book is just fantastic for inspiration of nice pictures that just give you an idea about, oh, that looks really nice with that or, um, that greenery um, works really well with that particular flower or I like the combinations of that so I dip in and out of this maybe not more for how to grow cut flowers for weddings but more for inspiration on how to put the flowers together and um, to look really pretty so that is a good resource as well if you are getting into growing wedding flowers. Someone that's been a huge inspiration to me um, as I've gone through the years learning how to grow cut flowers is Erin from Florette Flower Farm in America. I just love what she does. I follow her um, when I can and um, she has just amazing. She's great at teaching. She's great at producing the most beautiful flowers and a real inspiration for me. And again, another resource when I was learning how to be a flower farmer. And I really enjoy her books as well. So Erin has written a few books now and one of them is The Cut Flower Garden. And I really like this as well, just like Georgie Newbury's book, I find her books really easy to read and they're just a delight to go and use as a reference and to dip into, just to sit down on a weekend afternoon with a cup of tea and to have a look at some of her lovely flowers. Um, she's definitely a huge inspiration for me and I love the book in that it takes you through all the different seasons, looking at the main flowers that she grows and although she's in America, um, you can 
take a lot of what she is saying and apply it to over here in the UK. Um, but just the pictures in it, just absolutely fantastic. And just what she has done and the way that she teaches um, what she has learned is absolutely fantastic. And I know that she's inspired many, many flower farmers as well as myself. And she's also written another book that I have, which is Discovering Dahlias. And dahlias are something that I love. They really are the backbone of my flowers in the autumn time. And every year I'm learning more and more about them and I'm looking for inspiration on new varieties to grow as well. And Erin's book is lovely in that it's got a whole section at the back of the book um, all about the different varieties um, that you can grow and just some beautiful pictures just to inspire you for the following season. So even though you don't need more tubers, you've got lots of tubers, you've got your flowers, just having a look at that book um, is just going to give you more ideas for new ones that you want to try. So looking at another book now, and this is a little bit away from the flower farming side of things, but this is a man that has really inspired me. And that is Charles Dowding. And his book here is No Dig Organic Home and Garden. And he's written quite a number of books. He's written this one with Stephanie Hafferty and it's a fantastic resource. So no dig gardening is something that I did not know about when I first started flower farming. So when I first started making my beds in the field up at the top um, outside in the garden, I was doing traditional digging. I was getting rid of the turf. I was digging, putting huge amount of physical effort into getting these beds up and going. So my initial flower patches from all that digging, they were all right. Um, they, they did the job, um, but they the soil structure wasn't great and um, it needed a lot of amending and um, I had put in a huge amount of physical effort to produce that and I knew that I was going to be expanding that area up the top wasn't going to be enough for my flower farming growing business I was going to have to expand down the bottom of the garden I'm a member of flowers from the farm which is a non-profit organization within the UK for flower farmers and growers and um, we basically all come together to support each other and um, to um, learn from each other um, we have conferences and we help promote the British flower industry and um, so by all working together hopefully we can get more British flowers into people's homes and into events and weddings and things across the UK and um, because they really are fantastic but one of the nice things is I work very much on my own and flowers from the farm puts us all together. We're all out on our different farms, but we can have conferences and we can meet up and get to know each other. And a few years ago, I was at a conference in Edinburgh and the guest speaker at that was Charles Dowding. And he was amazing. He completely inspired me of a completely different way of gardening that I did not know about. So instead of traditional digging, he is promoting that you can grow um, your beds by putting your cardboard down, putting several inches of mulch on top of your compost and things, grow directly into that. And then underneath the cardboard will disintegrate eventually. And so will what is underneath it um, and it will create a flower bed. So it's a flower bed that you have created from no physical effort from digging, just from getting your um, compost and things along there. So a little bit, but not as much. But the most important thing is that you are not altering that soil structure. So every time you dig, you are altering the soil structure and it's having to repair itself. And that's when weeds can come along more um, and the organisms in the soil and things, you're destroying them by digging. Um, so when you don't dig, you're leaving all that alone and nature really does work. You get a fantastic soil structure, you get really good quality beds and you get really good quality flowers and vegetables. Now, Charles's book here um, that I have got, it's predominantly referring to vegetables um, because that is what he does. And you really can see the difference. He has lots of experiments where he shows you dig beds and no dig beds and the comparison of the produce and things that you can grow um, from the different types. Um, but what you can do is you can apply it to flower growing. So when he came and talked to us, although it is vegetables that he may concentrate on in his books and things, you can very easily adapt it to flower growing as well. So ever since then, I have never dug a bed. We have made all of our new flower patches. The two new ones down the bottom are all no dig beds and they get amended every year by adding more compost on top, but not digging them over. Um, so definitely, if you're looking for a new way of working and um, you're wanting to grow vegetables or fruit, or flowers whatever it is that you are gardening have a read of some of his books because they will just inspire you on a totally different way of doing things
So this book doesn't just talk about the no dig method as well, it talks all about composting as well and other things like nettle teas and comfrey teas so you can make natural fertilizers um, to feed your plants from what you're already maybe growing in the garden. So there's lots and lots of interesting content there and it's well worth having a read of. So this is a book called The Cutting Garden by Anne Haplin. It's an American book that I picked up secondhand a few years ago, but probably is one of the most referred to books that I have in my little flower growing library of books. And the reason I like it so much is the section at the back, which has got lots of cut flowers in it and it takes you through everything. So it has just little chunks about each cut flower, um, but it talks about hardiness zones, it talks about planting conditions, it talks about harvesting, conditioning. It's just got that little snippet on each flower. Um, so it's a really nice reference guide and um, I do, I love it. I go back to it um, all the time when I just need to remind myself of something about a cut flower and quite often it's just the conditioning or just thinking, was that what I did with that flower last year? Do I need to condition it in this way or can I grow that there? Is that the right time of year to be growing it or the right soil conditions? Um, so it's a great little read this one and um, it's got a really nice section at the front um, just more generally on flower growing as well. Um, but definitely it's the encyclopedia at the back that um, is what I really like. Sometimes it's good just to have some excellent reference books for gardening in your collection as well and when I first started gardening one thing that I thought was a complete mystery to me I didn't know how it would work or whether I could get it to work was um, propagating plants so I love the idea that you can propagate plants from what you already have to create new stock but I didn't have the first foggiest about how to go about doing this and I really like this book it's the RHS um, propagating plants book And the reason that I like it is because it's really clear. It talks about all sorts of different ways of propagating. So whether that's from softwood cuttings or hardwood cuttings or layering or division or talks about everything that you could think of in here. And it also has nice clear pictures. And I really do like a nice clear picture of something to show me what I'm supposed to be doing. So it's all very well having things written down, but if I can see a picture, that brings something to life far more for me. Um, so this is something that I am still very much learning from. I wish I had more time to devote to um, learning more about propagating plants, but I know that when I do have the time and I want to learn a bit more, then I can dip into this book and it is going to tell me just what I need to do um, to try things out. So it's always good to know the times of year to propagate plants as well um, and the types of cuttings that you should be doing at different times of year and this book tells you everything that you would need to know. So if it's something that you're interested in yourself for propagating your own plants at home it's definitely a nice clear easy read um, with just so much information in it. It's got everything in it that you could possibly think of for propagating plants. So just like Charles Dowding and his no-dig methods were a complete revelation for me and completely changed the way that I garden, this book here, Cool Flowers by Lisa Ziegler, is a brilliant book as well and it was a complete revelation to me as well when i first started growing flowers i thought you grew seeds in the springtime that produced your flowers in the summer and that was the end of it I had no idea when I started that you can extend your season um, by being able to grow flowers in the autumn and overwinter them and they will produce earlier flowers for you in the springtime and they'll be stronger and the flowers will be better. Um, it, it was an amazing thing to find out because it's just not something that you generally think. You just think, right, we've had winter, gonna start my seed sowing now. It's traditionally garden centers all get going um, and that is when you would think about starting everything off to be starting seeds off at the end of your season when everything is slowing down that just didn't seem quite right but it is right growing seeds and cool flowers for better earlier hardy annuals the next year um, works fantastically and Lisa explains it all in her book here and it's a lovely easy read again there's nothing complicated in there it's not hard to read and um, it just takes you through all the different flowers that you can grow then because you can only um, plant hardy annual specific types and perennials and things you can't put any of your tender um, things in over at the winter time um, but this book tells you it all and is fantastic um, for just getting you started in the early autumn time so that you'll get better earlier flowers the following year. 
So Helen Titchmarsh has a nice um, how to garden series of books and one of the ones that I like is Growing Roses. Something that I wanted to know more about was Growing Roses. So I got this book several years ago and I really like it because it covers everything in a nice simple manner. It just answers the questions that I had and it's something that I refer back to all the time. So it talks about buying roses, planting roses, when to prune, how to prune roses, different pests and diseases that you might have and gives you lots of ideas about different types of roses to grow in your garden as well, all the different types and varieties in there. Um, and it's just really Really easy to use and um, something like pruning roses how to prune them when to prune them just knowing what to do at the right time it's nice to have something that you can easily look up and think that's what I need to do and um, just now so uh, it's a really nice easy guide and um, on something that I wanted to know about so yep I dip in and out of this one all the time I haven't actually got any of his other books but it would be interesting to um, see what um, his other books are like as well because I really have found this one extremely helpful so I don't know whether you you've ever read any of his others but uh, let me know how you've got on if you have. Another book that I have is Speciality Flowers by Alan Armitage. And this isn't a book that you would necessarily just pick up for an easy read so it is um, quite small writing, it has a lot of information in there, um, not so many bright colourful pictures but what it does have, it has a wealth of information about particular cut flowers. So if you're wanting to get past just the general information um, on the back of a seed packet, or um, you might have just a very general book that just goes very briefly into different flowers, but you want to know far more. So maybe something's not been growing particularly well for you, just can't crack it. Why is it not growing well for me? Then this is a really good resource to dip in and out of because it just takes you through every stage of growing it, it, um, harvesting it tells you exactly the soil conditions and things that that particular plant likes and um, the growing to harvesting window and um, it just really gets down to the nitty-gritty of flower growing for a particular variety so I would definitely say this is one that I would go and look up if I wanted to know something far more about a particular variety of flower so not my, maybe a, a sit down and just read the whole book it's um, when you want to know more um, and you want something some questions answered about particular varieties of flower that you're growing so that you can get it spot on and improve your growing. So the last book that I wanted to talk to you about today was one of my favourites which is The Cut Flower Patch by Louise Carley. And this was one of my favourite early books that I got. It was like Georgie Newbery's one. I got it around about the same time and I found it just as clear to read. It was just a really simple, nice read, taking you through all the different types of flowers for going in a cut flower patch. And not again, specific for a business, certainly something that you could read if you were just wanting to grow cut flowers in your garden at home. And it's got a really nice section. It's a nice paragraph on each of the different flowers within the sections in the book. It's got a really nice bit in it. So after each type of flower that is talked about in a paragraph, Louise then splits it up a little bit. So she's got little headings that'll say things like, should you feed or not feed? Should you pinch it out? Um, just little details that you might at a glance want to remind yourself about that flower. So I'll think, should I be feeding Nigella? I'll quickly look it up in here and it'll just instantly say, so I won't have to look through the whole paragraph. It'll just be something clearly at the side that says that pinching out again, it's always difficult from year to year to remember which is the flowers that you should be pinching out. So um, you can just have a very quick reference guide in this. So that is my favorite thing about Louise's book, these little headings after the paragraph about the flower and um, just as little reminders about when you should be planting out, should you be pinching, should you be feeding, harvesting, things like that. So a really great book again, nice pictures, really user friendly and definitely one of my top favourite flower books. So I hope you have enjoyed having a look at some of my favourite flower books. It's been great to share them with you on what's been a very rainy, miserable morning outside. So it's nice to have been inside and able to show you some of my favourites here. 
And have you got any really good books at home? Have you got any that have been really inspirational for you for gardening or ones that have really got you started in knowing something about maybe it is cut flowers or maybe it's propagating or maybe it's about growing shrubs or maybe it's about vegetable growing? Are there any that you'd like to share with us here? It'd be great to know about any really good books that you have come across. And I certainly know that there's lots and lots of books that I'd still like to read about gardening. I'd definitely love to know a bit more about growing fruit, growing vegetables. I'd love to know a bit more about growing foliage to go with arrangements and shrubs and woody stems um, to grow in the garden for that because I've got a little bit of that, but I'd love to establish um, some more permanent shrubs in the garden that I can cut from. So there is always something that you want to learn. Container gardening, um, hanging baskets, uh, things to look nice through the winter, what can provide winter colour. There's so many different things that I'd like to find out about. So please do, if there's anything you'd like to share in the comments with us, any really good books, then that would be fantastic to know. And I'll leave a link in the description um, for all the ones that we've talked about today and you can see my ideas list there. And next week we will be having a look at paper whites and amaryllis bulbs to grow for around Christmas time and early January time, just when you're wanting something really pretty to look at in the house. And these bulbs are really easy to grow and they're really quick to grow as well. So things like the hyacinths do take quite a long time to force. You're looking at about 13 weeks, whereas you're not looking at narrowly that long with your amaryllis and um, your paper whites. You can get some blooms within 68 weeks there. So perfect timing now for Christmas time or just that period after. Whereas I always think that um, lots of people are growing things for Christmas time and um, to bloom at that specific time but I always think it's nice to have something more mid-January early February as well when it's darker nights and you're just looking to have something cheerful in your house so join me then